Hi, this is Irina Nick from Tech Foundation, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own AI that can answer the questions based on your custom knowledge base. So why do you have to create custom AI if we already have ChatGPT? Well, you can ask ChatGPT something about the general knowledge on the internet, like for example, what is UX design? or what is product management, and ChatGPT will give you a decent answer based on something it has seen before on the internet. And there is no way that ChatGPT can answer questions about the specific knowledge. For example, about uh, my specific user research, because there is no way it can access this data. And that's why I've decided to create my own AI. It's pretty easy, just a few lines of code. We are going to use uh, OpenAI uh, API, so still we are going to use GPT-3 uh, model. And um, we just upgrade it in that way that it knows about our custom context. How are we going to let this model know about our custom context? Well, we just give it in the prompt. You might ask, why cannot we then use just ChatGPT for that? Because uh, we can give the context in the prompt also in ChatGPT. The problem is that usually user research databases are quite big. And if you want to implement any other custom uh, knowledge database, it's usually big. So you cannot put everything just in one prompt. And that's why we have to create a little bit more flexible way to give the context in the prompt. And we are going to do this by uh, breaking our knowledge database on small chunks and indexing these small chunks. So when we uh, query our AI, uh, it will be able to find the relevant context in uh, all our database and based on only this relevant context, give us the answer. So we are not going to give all our knowledge in one prompt, in one query, but we are going to find the relevant knowledge and give only these pieces of information to our AI. And that's how it works, pretty easy. So instead of going and uh, giving all the context, we, are, we need to find a way to find a relevant context. And that's why we need an external library to do this. And that's why we cannot do it manually, but we have to do it in code. Indexing the data is uh, not an easy task, but luckily for us, there is already an open source library that we can use. So we don't have to go into the technical details how to do that, but we just need to figure out how to use this library. The library is called GPT index, and it is also using GPT-3 API in order to break your data and uh, make an index out of it. Uh, so we just need to figure out how to use it. And it's pretty simple. I'm going to show you now how. I've assembled a small project in uh, Google Notebook. It is called Collab Environment. Uh, so you can also follow uh, this tutorial and uh, try it on your own. So the first thing that we need to do is to uh, upload our data that we want to index, right? And if you want to use your custom knowledge database, then you need to create a folder here uh, named uh, context data. I've called it context data and then slash data, but um, you can call it whatever you want and then just change the name here. So you create a folder with uh, all the files from your knowledge database and it will be there. Uh, I've prepared already a folder for you that we are going to use in this tutorial. And these are uh, just fake interviews. So I cannot share with you the real interviews because it's uh, sensitive information and uh, it's private information. I cannot share it. So I've decided to create fake interviews also with uh, ChatGPT. I've actually asked ChatGPT to create an interview script for me about uh, cooking habits and the use of domestic appliances. It created uh, not a very good uh, interview script, but uh, for the sake of experiment, I think that's fine. So after that, I've asked uh, ChatGPT to give me an interview script for these questions. And uh, I gave it just example of uh, what an interview is. So I created just a small use case like business professional living alone who tries to control uh, his diet. And uh, for this small use case, ChatGPT was able to give me an interview script that uh, later I 
was using as the custom knowledge base. So in this example, we are going to use uh, fake user research data. Unfortunately, it also means that we cannot be, uh, we cannot get any really insightful information out of it because still GPT provides you uh, quite blank data. So <laughs> it's more like a boilerplate than um, real insights, but uh, unfortunately I cannot share with you the real information. So uh, that's what we have. So I've created a repository for you that you can copy into your project. And uh, there is already a piece of code for that. We are going just to run it. And what it does, it clones our uh, Git repository that is here and uh, adds the information here. So now it's not there. I just need to update it. Yes, reload, please. Um, yeah, I don't know why it doesn't show it uh, from the beginning, but uh, anyway, now we have our context data. And we have a data folder inside where we have all our interviews. You can uh, check these interviews, um, interviewer answers and interviewee answers and interviewer uh, questions. So for our examples, we are going to use just four interviews. Of course, in the real scenario, you're going to have much more. Then we need to install uh, the dependencies. So we are going to use uh, GPT index library and this library um, in turn uses the line chain library. So we are going to use actually two libraries that we need to install now. We run the code, it is installing. All right, we installed our dependencies and now we are going to create our functions that we are going to use. And it's only few lines of code, just two functions uh, for us. So first we need to import everything that we need from GPT index and line chain. And if you want to learn more about it, you can just go to the documentation and uh, it is written here what you need or you just copy. It's the same. And then we are going to write just two functions. First one is construct index. And this, functions, uh, this function take the directory path. In our case, it will be context data slash data. And it creates an index out of it. So uh, instead of having uh, just the raw data like we have here, it will create a JSON index here uh, that will index all the information that it finds uh, here. And that's all. The first thing that we are doing here is just setting parameters for the large language model that uh, we are going to use. So it's just the parameters from uh, Open uh, AI API. And uh, you can also um, find the parameters here. So maximum length, uh, the temperature that uh, is responsible to uh, how the answer of AI is different from one another. So if you ask the same question, will it be always the same answer and then the temperature will be zero or will it give uh, mm, different answers and then the temperature will be higher. So you can read more about the settings for large language model in the uh, open AI API documentation. And you can then play in the playground, just asking uh, uh, questions to AI, for example, uh, what is um, UX design? And uh, then checking what answer it will get. And that's what we are doing here. We set the parameters like maximum input size. We set the temperature, the model name, because there are different models and you can learn more in the OpenAI uh, documentation and uh, so on. So after we set all the parameters, we are going to use the functions that are defined in the GPT index library. So we just have to um, define our path that we are going to use to create our index. And that's basically all. Uh, after defining the path and loading the data, we are just creating the index and saving it uh, to the uh, local folder. And that's basically all what we do just loading the data, uh, running the index, and then uh, saving the index in JSON format here. And then we have the second function. And uh, what it does is uh, only querying our AI model uh, with the question and the context information. So we first identify the index that we are going to use and then just querying um, the AI 
with the user input. So here we ask a user to input something what we uh, what we want to ask our AI, and then we just query our AI with the context information and displaying everything uh, in Markdown format. So pretty easy. We just have to uh, run this code. And uh, for now, you won't see anything because we just uh, we just let uh, this notebook know that uh, these are our two functions. We didn't run them yet. Then we need to set our Open API keys. So uh, to in order to use uh, Open AI API, we need a key, and uh, you can get it by signing up on their website. So after you sign up, uh, you'll have here. API keys. So if I go here, view API keys, it will be there. If you don't have anything, you can create a new uh, secret API. It will create an API for you that uh, you can copy. I copy this one, press OK, and uh, just go here and run the code. It will ask me to put my OpenAI key here. So uh, that's what I will do and you will do as well. I won't show you my key because uh, you need to use your own. And the reason for this is because uh, using OpenAI API is uh, not free, but it's relatively cheap. So for example, for all my experiments, I've uh, spent only 14 cents and you'll get $18 for free. So they call it credit, but whatever. Now it's time to construct our index. So remember, we defined the function here, construct index. And uh, now we just need to run it uh, with the path of the data that we want to index. So in our case, it's context data data. So let's run it. All right, so we have created our index and it will appear here. I don't know why this call-up environment doesn't show it immediately, but uh, if we reload, it will show it. So let's just do it. Uh, after we reload, we can see that uh, index JSON is now here. It wasn't there before. Uh, so it all worked. And now what we need to do is just start asking questions. So quite exciting, let's try. Uh, remember, uh, our data was about interviews, about cooking and uh, using domestic appliances. And the information from uh, these interviews is what uh, our AI will use to answer our questions. For example, I can ask what people like about cooking at home, because the interviews were about cooking at home and we were asking this question to our uh, interviewees. Uh, let's try to see what it will answer. So it answers that people like cooking at home because it allows them to relax and unwind after a long day. It's health, it healthier and more affordable than eating out and so on. So uh, all this information was mentioned in our interviews. Unfortunately, uh, this time it didn't break it down, but we actually can ask um, our AI also to break it down um, into clusters and then it will be easier for us. Or for example, we can even ask to brainstorm something, for example, marketing campaign based on our interviews. And uh, already uh, use AI to brainstorm something about our project. And it's very exciting because uh, now we can actually uh, use AI to brainstorm with us, to brainstorm uh, about our project based on our information. So it won't use just the general information uh, from the internet, but it will use the information relevant to us in order to brainstorm more ideas. After you've played enough with uh, your AI, you can just uh, stop this. Um, it will show you the error, but this is because we just uh, stopped uh, this call from happening. So it's not the error, it's just uh, the keyboard interrupt. So uh, don't be worried about it. And that's it, just a few lines of code. Actually, the only thing that we do, this is uh, the installing dependencies, let's uh, close it. Uh, it's just this one. So we just define the functions and that's all. And then we just run the functions. I hope this video was helpful for you. And now you're able to create your own AI that will use your custom knowledge base. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel because here you could find a lot of relevant and free information for designers.